In the, second, in the Second World War, when Pearl Harbor was bombed, we declared an emergency. Well, what we're facing right now actually makes the Second World War look like small potatoes. This is far worse, it's far bigger, and there's no coming back from it, from all of these emergencies. So we need to actually declare the emergency. At the time they did this, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, it took six months, okay, six months to transform the economy. We did not have a wartime economy, uh, but within six months, 25% of GDP, that's like a huge portion of the economy, had become a war economy that was prepared for war. Okay, they did that in six months. How about in the next 15 years, we go to 100% clean, renewable energy, wind, water, and sun. So we are calling for a Green New Deal, like the New Deal that helped get us out of the Great Depression. We need a New Deal now, which is also green, because that does a couple things. Number one, it puts everyone back to work with a full-time living wage job. <laughs> Number two, it meets the needs of our communities to make them completely sustainable in terms of ecology, in terms of economy and social needs. So we're talking about converting our energy system, our food system, our transportation system, as well as meeting critical human needs for housing, schools, and health care. So the Green New Deal also turns the tide on climate change, because if we were at 100% clean renewable energy in 15 years, that is enough to turn the tide on climate change. And if the US begins to do this, we can then begin to set an example for the world to move forward instead of playing the role of sabotaging the forward movement of the rest of the world, which is the role that the US has been playing uh, in the UN uh, climate conferences. So we need to turn that around. The Green New Deal uh, also plays a very critical role because it makes wars for oil and other resources obsolete. So we can cut the friggin' military, bring the troops home, dismantle the bases, dismantle our bases, which get us into trouble, cut our military at least 50%. We're now spending a trillion dollars a year have we made ourselves more safe? Hardly. Have we made the world more safe? No. Have we made the world more democratic and humane? Hardly. Exactly the opposite on all counts. Where the troops have gone in, we have been very good at creating failed states, at creating terrorist strongholds, and creating mass migrations of refugees. So bottom line is, this is fixable. Let me also add to that, we can bail out students now. We bailed out the friggin' bankers. They caused the problem. The bankers caused the crisis with their waste, fraud, and abuse, yet we bailed them out against the will of the American people. The uh, the Barack Obama administration and both houses, both Democratic houses of Congress, bailed out the banks, gave away the store, inflicted an austerity budget. Uh, and in doing so, they provided $17 trillion worth of bailouts. We can bail out the students for $1 trillion plus change. We can do that. We can create a welcoming path to citizenship for the immigrant Americans who have always been the backbone of our society. I had the great pleasure last night of hearing Public Enemy 2.0. Anybody remember Public Enemy? Yeah, really amazing. The original hip-hop group. And they were playing at this sort of libertarian event that I went to. I always go to these libertarian events, and I'll tell you, I'm the only candidate there, so we are really getting together. It's amazing. Uh, the Green Party is becoming bigger all the time, I can't tell you. 
Um, we're seeing socialists come into the Green Party. We're seeing a lot of libertarians uh, work with the Green Party, especially the grassroots uh, libertarians. Greens actually have a long history uh, of principled grassroots libertarianism. Uh, anyhow, uh, Public Enemy was there last night performing, and they were saying, you know, they were, they were critiquing the Republican debate, <laughs> saying, you know, these guys are talking about building walls. Don't they know this is about tearing down walls? This is the age of tearing down walls. And they're absolutely right. And, and just a quick word about schools, because what, um, you know, what they did at, at Diet High School is so inspiring where uh, community members and grandmothers were on a hunger strike, uh, no solid food hunger strike for 32 days, and it would have gone on. There were many members who were going to just continue to the end, and uh, other members of the community didn't want, did not want to see that happen, so they called off the strike, but they're not done. It's so important, you know, that all of us fight the privatization of our public school system. <laughs> This is, you know, this is the theft of an essential public resource. We know that charterizing our schools does not improve them. In most cases, it makes them worse. It allows them, you know, to basically uh, cherry pick the students and uh, take the ones who have enormous uh, parental and, and community support and, and just dump the others. Uh, this is not helping, and when the Obama administration adopted its policy of closing 5,000 so-called poor performing, which means poor, schools, you know, this, is, this has been a disaster, and it's been led by the Democratic Party, the Obama administration, uh, the Rahm Emanuel administration in Chicago. So, we need to stand up for our public schools and fight back, and there are a lot of students and teachers and communities that are ready to fight with us. So the bottom line is that, um, you know, I used to think we had to work really, really hard to change people's minds. I was an advocate for many years before I became political. I got tricked into running for office one time back in uh, 2002, and I ran against Mitt Romney uh, for governor of Massachusetts. I had no idea what I was getting into. Uh, and, and, and I went into this debate. We, we fought our way into, into a debate because people did not want to hear this new form of torture that they call the American political debates. And we, you know, people were screaming that they wanted to hear other voices and real voices. We were able to push our way into a televised debate Inside the debate hall, I basically spoke up for the same agenda that you've just heard. And inside that TV studio, you can imagine those ideas went over like lead balloons. But when we walked out of the studio into the waiting press area, I was mobbed by the press who told me that I had won the debate on the instant online viewer poll. <laughs> and you can be sure that was the last time they did an instant online viewer poll of a debate. Because <laughs> they want you to believe that what the media has to say about it is the reality. You know, and we've seen that in, in the Republican debates. What most people don't know is that these are not public debates. This is a select audience. So when people are cheering madly for this craziness, for these buffoons, these really dangerous and pathological people, that's not the American public. What, they are, what they're trying to do is to persuade people not to vote. They're trying to persuade people not to vote and to make you feel disempowered and unrepresented. But what they're really saying is that that's what the Republican and the Democratic parties, for that matter, are about. Anyhow, in that moment, I had this incredible epiphany when I thought you know, that I had totally bombed. I learned I won the debate. And, and I realized then that this whole political scene is basically a scam. It's, it's essentially an amazing, uh, elaborate uh, propaganda exercise to make us feel disempowered and um, powerless. But the truth of the matter is that we are not powerless, we are powerful. We actually represent, 
we represent, uh, you know, core American values. Believe it or not, this is how most people feel. You don't hear from them because they don't have the megaphone. The megaphone is in the hands of, you know, the Koch brothers and the, and the billionaires and the Democratic National Committee and all that. And that's why they control the debates. So I want to uh, leave you with two things. One is that we have uh, two court cases that have been filed. One has been filed and the other one is about to be that are suing the Commission on Presidential Debates so that we can have real debates. <laughs> so what, what we all can do here, one thing we can do right now uh, if you go to our website, which is jill2016.com, uh, there's a petition that you can sign and get everybody you know to sign it. Because anybody who's not on the payroll of the Democratic or Republican parties desperately wants this. Polls actually show that uh, only, we'll put it this way, 50% of Americans now do not identify as either Democrat or Republican. So when they... When they restrict the, the debate to just a Democrat and Republican, they are locking out 50% of voters. We have a right to vote, but we also have a right to know who we can vote for. So it, go to our website, sign our petition, send it around. You can also get on our, our newsletter and our email list or our Facebook page. Um, we have handouts, uh, just a flyer out there that you can pick up because this is, you know, this is the age of crisis, but it really is the age of rebellion. We are that rebellion. The future is in our hands. Democracy is in our hands. Justice is in our hands. Peace is in our hands. The American people are clamoring for it. This is the revolt that we see going on inside of the Democratic Party uh, within Sanders' campaign. What they don't know is that the Democratic Party has a kill switch that gets directed at campaigns that become a threat. And if the Sanders campaign becomes a threat, it will be terminated. And uh, Bernie has already pledged allegiance to Hillary or whoever it is that will win the corporate process. So it's really important for us to build it because they're going to come. Get ready. There are going to be a lot of unhappy campers out there. They're being kind of um, smoke screened at the moment. but. You know, I don't think they're going to be happy little lemmings that are going to follow Bernie into the Democratic Party uh, and into Hillary's campaign. So there are going to be a lot of people out there that are looking for a way forward. We got that way forward. It's in our hands. Join us uh, and hold on to your hat. It's going to be an incredible ride. Thank you.